I got this question many time into the comment section like how should I start learning DevOps? Well, in today's session we are going to talk about how should I learn DevOps by myself if I had to start from the scratch. There are certain caveats which I would like to mention. The first one is the learning can be different for everyone. There are certain topics which might be easy for you to understand but for some of you it might be a little difficult because you might be coming from different programming background. And one most important thing which is necessary if you are a beginner and if you want to learn DevOps is like you have to be a programmer and you should know some kind of a programming norm uh, or you should have a, some kind of a programming knowledge prior to starting to the DevOps. That's the primary requirement which I would consider. But since uh, this is going to be a very foundation level guide which I have prepared for you. So our main focus is like for anyone who would like to start this DevOps journey from the scratch. DevOps is a really big field with a lots of component starting with a GitHub, Jenkins, Ansible, Puppet, Kubernetes, Helm chart and Docker. Uh, but the main focus on the DevOps field is on continuous delivery as well as availability. But don't worry, we are going to talk on each topic and each component in bit more details and how can you start learning these components if you haven't have any experience before. So the first component which I'm talking about is GitHub. Uh, do you know github if no then you should go and search about github on google there are so many tutorials which is available there for beginner but in a nutshell what is github github is a code repository where a developer can push their code so that it is available for other developers or other tools to fetch those code and execute those code so you should learn github first of all because every step or every operation which we do in the devops somewhere uh, revolves around github so you need to pull your code what i mean by pull once a developer submits a code into the github then you need to pull that code to deploy or to execute somewhere so you need to have that central repository somewhere so you have to be familiar with the github or either bitbucket or svn so these are the most three popular components which you should know before starting devops so the next component which I'm going to talk about is Jenkins. So after you pushed your code to GitHub or Bitbucket or SVN, so now your code resides somewhere in your repository. So from there you can access it. So the second component which I'm going to talk about here is the Jenkins. So you should know Jenkins also because Jenkins is something where we are going to set up our pipeline. Oh, now it might be a little difficult to understand what is pipeline. So pipeline in a very simple words is continuous execution and deployment and testing of a code. So what happens is Jenkins is a pipeline or is a setup of instruction which fetch your code from the GitHub repository, which execute test by deploying it on a different application server. And once that code is tested and verified, then final, uh, build is made final release build is made so that is where Jenkins comes in into the devops field okay so it might be possible like you might not know Jenkins before or you haven't worked with Jenkins before so it might sound very overwhelming like how should I learn Jenkins or how should I prepare a pipeline so don't worry you what you need to do is you need to first of all install Jenkins so that's going to be your first step if you are going to learn Jenkins so first try to set up a Jenkins pipeline by first of all installing Jenkins somewhere on your development machine or laptop or somewhere you should install Jenkins and after that try to create some hello world pipeline in it and I know Jenkins has a very good, really good documentation on how to set up this uh, tool or installation. So you can go and follow those tutorials. So that is going to build up your basic on how to use Jenkins. So that is going to be your second step after the GitHub. All right, since we have talked about Git and Jenkins, now there's a one more concept, continuous delivery. So continuous delivery concept is very much popular in terms of uh, or in the field of DevOps because you have to deliver the code continuously. So for that, there are two components. There is a Git from where we will fetch the code and then that code will be deployed using Jenkins. So that's how you're going to prepare your continuous environment where developer don't have to do anything manually by themselves. But on behalf of developers, Jenkins will take care of deployment, 
test execution and preparing your final release output or it can be a final your release build so this is how this continuous uh, pipeline or continuous delivery model has been built around git and the jenkins so these are very basic concepts and we will talk further more as we deep down into this session the next component which i'm talking about here is the docker docker is a very crucial component in terms of devops field because you can put your code inside your docker container and you can ship this container to any other machine or any other server where you want to deploy your application so if you know about docker then it's really good and if you don't know about docker then please go ahead and read about some some basic about rock, docker at least so that you get familiar with the concepts of docker but since you're starting with the devops then docker will come at a very later stage if you are an absolute beginner i would first go and learn git and jenkins first then i'll come to the docker but yeah docker is really really important concept we should you should know if you want to be an expert in the field of devops the next component which i'm talking about is ansible or puppet why you need ansible and puppet so let's consider an example you are a developer you build an application using some programming language and after building that application you want to deploy it on production so what you will do you will compile your code after compiling and if there are no any error then you are going to take out this code and deploy it on some remote server and then finally that code will run into the production that is your final objective so what you did is you just build your code manually you copied that code and put it on a remote server that is too manually and then finally you executed that code in the production so these are the steps you have done so imagine if you can automate this all these steps like your compilation as well as copying and putting it onto the remote server and then final the deployment so ansible and puppet these two are scripting languages which can help you to deploy and automate this kind of a task for a developer so developer don't have to do this task manually but ansible is an open source and puppet is a little bit proprietary so you have to pay for it for using the puppet so ansible and puppet both are different uh, from, it comes from different vendors actually so more of a, uh, most of the people are preferring ansible because it's robust and it's open source although you can use puppet if you if your company is providing you pu puppet license then you can use puppet also but more of a it's more of a shift toward ansible because more it's more open source more robust so people are choosing more ansible so ansible is targeting these uh, areas so you need to learn somehow ansible also some kind of a scripting language so that you can automate this devops task which you do on a daily basis the next component which i'm talking about is kubernetes so this is more of an advanced topic i know kubernetes is a very popular and quite a buzz topic uh, right now in the devops industry and everyone wants to learn about kubernetes and I have some uh, lab sessions and tutorials uploaded on Kubernetes on my channel, which you can go back and check. So where I have shown all this, like uh, if you want to start from the scratch, like how will you install Kubernetes on Ubuntu and CentOS? So all these tutorials are there, you can go and check. But if you are an absolute beginner and you don't know about Kubernetes, then Kubernetes is like an orchestration tool. I know this word is a little bit uh, more trendy, but in a simple word if i explain i told you what is docker so docker is like a container where you put your code but if you have multiple docker so like if you have five or ten docker containers then how will you manage those containers so there comes the kubernetes so kubernetes is going to manage your docker containers so what kubernetes will do in a nutshell kubernetes will help you to run your docker container in your production environment so what will happen is kubernetes kubernetes will manage docker and inside docker you will have your application running so ultimately kubernetes will be managing your container in production environment so kubernetes is a framework which is developed by google and then it later released somewhere around 2015 or 16 
and then it became quite popular in the DevOps uh, community and it is adopted very well. So Kubernetes is a little bit at more advanced topic and this is where I started because I had a little bit of background on Git, Jenkins, Ansible and uh, Docker. So learning Kubernetes was a bit of a curve but it was easy for me uh, to understand the Kubernetes concepts. But if you don't know Kubernetes, then I would highly recommend you to learn something about Docker and then come to Kubernetes. The next component which I'm going to talk about is the Helm chart. And this is a little bit one more framework uh, which comes after Kubernetes. So if you know Kubernetes, then after you can start learning about Helm chart. Because Helm chart is built to manage your Kubernetes tasks. So you should know Kubernetes before you start learning Helm chart. So how this Helm chart comes into picture? So first of all, you have your application which you have developed using some programming language. It can be Java, Angular, Node.js, Vue.js, Python, or any programming language. So you put that application inside your Docker container. Okay, and after you build your Docker container, then you are going to use Kubernetes to manage that Docker container. Okay, everything seems simple, but consider a scenario like it's Kubernetes complex, then I would say yes, it is a little bit complex. So then who is going to manage Kubernetes? Then there is a help chart. So help chart will help you to manage Kubernetes tasks. So it's kind of an automation tool or automation framework, which helps you to automate this kind of a Kubernetes task, which you do on a daily basis. So Helm chart will help you in that case. But if you are a beginner, then I would not recommend going to learn Helm chart directly. Learn Docker, learn Kubernetes, and then go for Helm chart. Okay, since we have talked about all the component and the two concepts like continuous delivery and availability, so now I would like you to evaluate yourself like what you know and what you want to know more or what you want to learn more actually. So if you know Git, if you know Jenkins, then I would say just go and learn Docker or Ansible. And if you are not familiar and if you are absolute fresher, then I would highly recommend just to learn something about Git or Bitbucket or SVN because these are the versioning tool which is really, really necessary for you if you want to start and if you want to go into the DevOps. And one more thing which I would like to mention is you should command your Linux also because you're going to interact with the Linux server quite a lot if you are going to be a DevOps. So you should know and you have to be a little bit fluent with your Linux command and uh, because you need to perform all this operation on a terminal that is putty we call it and this terminal requires you to know the linux command on your fingertips so if you don't know linux command and if you're not very good with the linux command then i would highly encourage you to learn some linux basics so these are my just key giveaways like if you want to start learning your devops then focus on these components and these topics and then go for some higher topics like kubernetes helm chart since I have started everything from Kubernetes and then started preparing this lab session, so please go back and check those lab session if you want to learn about Kubernetes. Like if you want absolute beginner, then go for like Kubernetes installation on Ubuntu and CentOS and how you're gonna set up Kubernetes cluster by yourself. The more advanced topics comes in like AWS or Google Cloud Platform. But these are like a very later stage uh, if you know the concepts very well, then it's really helpful to perform this kind of operation on a cloud. But since if I'm assuming you, you are a very beginner. And so I would highly encourage to learn these concepts before you jump to some cloud platform or AWS. So I hope you can start learning something uh, by after evaluating yourself, like where you stand and which tool you want to focus and which component you want to focus first. And if you have any questions, and then please put down into the comment section. And if you want to learn something about framework, and if you don't find on my channel, then also put down into the comment section and I'll try to come up with something, some, some more useful lab sessions. 
So stay tuned and if you want to learn Kubernetes then please go back and check my channel where I have posted lots of videos on Kubernetes and Helm chart which will help you to grasp those concepts more easily uh, with the guide and also you can find me on a web with the jhook.com that's my uh, blog where I keep on preparing similar guides on DevOps like uh, on how to guide for beginner and for expert so you can go and check that one also all right then see you into the next session where we will see some demo and till then bye bye